Uh, good afternoon. We welcome you. There's Marcia. Look at that. Just as we said, four, three, two, one uh, appeared. Voila. <laughs> Thank you to the uh, regular meeting of the Board of Library Trustees on Thursday, July 28, 2022. Um, could we have, um, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, could we have a roll call, please? Yes, first we have Chair Felger. Present. And I do apologize if I pronounce anything incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> and Vice Chair Joshi. Present. Thank you. Um, Trustee Moreau. Uh, here. Thank you. Trustee Petty. Here. And Trustee Thompson. Here. Perfect. That's everyone present here today. For staff, we have the library and museums director. We have this assistant city manager, myself, the administrative assistant. We have a public services manager interim fund development officer, library assistant one, technology Ser services supervisor, all present today. Great, thank you. I think we have some special guests too, but maybe they get announced a little later. I can do that or I can recognize them now and get them in. Um, okay. Mr. Sovereign, would you like to unmute and uh, introduce yourself? I need to have you, there you go. Yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, we have, I think, an interesting proposition that uh, you have a proposal from mm -hmm. us for, uh, which we'll go over later. My son, John, is also here to uh, fill in some of the details he's been working on. Great, well, we welcome you. We Thanks. enjoy having members of the public here. We're going we're to- also, Sorry, excuse me. Uh, we're also expecting the artist, uh, Natalia Carraza to join us. She is here. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we'll be getting to that item on the agenda. Uh, we're gonna start off the meeting with a presentation uh, to recognize Library Assistant One Phoebe uh, Pagano for five years of service to the Monterey Public Library and City of Monterey. Um, and I'm not sure if Kim or Inga will be doing the presentation on this. So I'll just kick it off uh, by saying that um, Phoebe is really an essential part of our staff. And she was here when I was hired 20 years ago. And her um, current supervisor, David Kuhn, who's our technology services supervisor, will uh, read into the minutes the recognition of Phoebe Pagano. Phoebe Pagano was hired as a regular part-time library assistant one in services on April the 2nd, 2016. Her five-year anniversary would have been in April of 2021, but she was furloughed from June 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021 due to the budget reductions resulting from COVID-19. Taking the furlough into account, her five-year at anniversary actually fell in May of 2022. Phoebe's duties in technical services include copy cataloging and physical processing of new library materials, repair of damaged library materials, and processing magazines. Although the library now receives many of its materials pre-processed, are, there are still plenty of items requiring Phoebe's keen attention. Phoebe has taken some cataloging classes and has done some original cataloging. When asked what she enjoys most about her job, her answer was naturally cataloging. Phoebe took pride in knowing that her accurate catalog records lead a patron to the book that they are looking for. She also enjoys previewing new materials as they arrive. In addition to her technical services work, she also works at the library help desk, checks in materials, and assists with the bookmobile program. 
She is always willing to take on other duties or additional desk shifts as needed. A previous supervisor wrote of her, she is conscientious, consistent, and thorough in cataloging, processing, and her other work tests. Phoebe originally joined the Monterey Public Library shelving materials as a library page in March of 1997. She was often noted for her accuracy and neatness in her work, skills she continues to apply to advantage in her technical services position. Phoebe gradually assumed on-call library assistant responsibilities and circulation as well. In 2007, her supervisor wrote, Monterey Public Library is lucky to have Ms. Pagano as an on-call LA1. She is a joy to work with and contributes so much to so many ideas of the library. She is punctual and reliable and has come to our rescue many times. She frequently helps in other divisions, such as working on the bookmobile and helping youth services with summer reading program signups and parties. In 2013, a 12-year-old patron sent her the following note. Thank you for always being at the bookmobile. I always look forward to coming to the bookmobile. Bookmobile days are one of my favorite days of the week. Thank you for all that you do. <laughs> Please join us in echoing the words of 12-year-old Jeremiah as we thank Phoebe Pagano for all that she does for the library, the city, and our community. Thank you, Phoebe, for five years of regular part-time service and 19 years of on-call assignments. We look forward to many more years to come. This is for you. Is Thank you. Phoebe, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I love libraries since I was a little kid. I feel at home in libraries, and I feel so lucky to have spent so much of my working life in a place where I really feel at home. And then this is something maybe a little different, but I'd like to remember Meg Morris. Mm -hmm. She was already working here as a reference page when I started. She clearly had a sharp mind and she was a fine baker who shared her projects with us. Although not a big talker, she had a way with words. Her comments were often witty. She was generous. When cards went around, she always contributed money as well as a pithy well phrased and sometimes smiley bulky note <laughs> in my opinion she could also be a real curmudgeon <laughs> she was my junior in years but my senior in position she was the la2 in technical services and i was the la1 we had an epic personality conflict um, after the layoffs, she was the first formerly regular employee to come back as a seasonal worker. I think the library was the main thing in her life after her mother died. Mm -hmm. She was always extremely reliable and conscientious. It was these qualities that led to the discovery of her death mm -hmm. on January 19th, 1921 when she did not show up for work if okay if, i don't know if meg had not died i would not have this job mm -hmm. and i would not be here for my five-year recognition mm -hmm. i don't know if she got her 20-year recognition in 2020 um in case she didn't make it, because you know the COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Let's recognize Meg also today, mm -hmm. because she really was um, just so devoted to the library. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Phoebe. We're lucky to have you. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to come forward and also comment? Uh, Jennifer, maybe you could explain to them how to do so. I could thank you for that introduction. 
If you are not joining us in person at the council chamber, there are two ways to virtually participate in this meeting. You may join directly on Zoom.gov from your computer or mobile device, or you may call into the Zoom meeting. To join this meeting on Zoom, use the link or phone number at the agenda on the agenda posted at iSearchMonterey.org. To call in by telephone, dial toll-free 833-568-8864. Once again, that toll-free number to call is 833-568-8864. Then enter the meeting ID 161-352-8864. Once again, this meeting's webinar ID is 161-352-8864. Then press the pound sign. If prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are available at monterey.org slash public meeting. To make a public comment, click on the raise your hand button at the bottom of the Zoom toolbar. If you are called in by phone, raise your hand by dialing star nine and unmute yourself when called upon by dialing star six. Attendees will be muted until it is your turn to speak. Public speakers will be called upon in the order of hands raised. Please stay within the time limit established for this meeting. If you are connected live on Zoom, the timer is accurate with no delay. Um, so that is actually something we can talk about. Um, usually for a planning meeting, we do three minutes for comments. And I think before anyone comments, share if you could tell me how long you allow public comments for, I would appreciate that. I don't know that we have a hard and fast rule, but three minutes sounds reasonable. Okay, great. And I do know we do three minutes because our mayor does three minutes for, for council meetings. So I think it would be nice to keep that consistent. Um, so carry on on. Today's meeting is also streamed live on the city of city's YouTube account at youtube.com slash city of Monterey with an approximate 10 second delay and on Com Comcast channel 25 with up to a 90 second delay. If you plan to make a public comment, Join the meeting using Zoom or by telephone and ensure you join in time to accommodate the delay. As always, we look forward to receiving your public comment. Okay. And, and there are um, no hands raised on Zoom and there are no attendees in the audience who have not spoken yet. Great, thank you so much. The next item on the agenda is consent items. Uh, consent items allow for a review of those items recommended for approval on consent or recommended to be continued, tabled, or withdrawn. Consent items consist of those items which are routine and for which a staff recommendation has been prepared. A member of the public or a trustee may request that an item recommended for approval on consent be heard on the regular agenda for further discussion. Uh, today, the only item, uh, the initial items on the consent agenda are approval of minutes for the June 23rd and July 14th meetings. Um, do any trustees have any technical issues or questions? Yes, Bob. Items four, five, and six are also on the consent agenda. Right, I realized that, but they've got them broken down here. I thought we could start with the minutes. Oh, okay. I thought you said only the approval of minutes were consent items. No, <laughs> the first two are. <laughs> Did and you have any issues with those? Oh, no. Okay. And are there any members of the public who wish to comment on the minute approval? I still see, I'm sorry, it's windy here. I see no members in the audience and no hands raised. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to approve the two sets of minutes. Go ahead, Marsha. I move to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, could I have a roll call vote, please? Yes, and I'm sorry, but I missed who was the second. Can you? I, Jim Thompson, I was. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not familiar with your voices. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for the vote, we have Chair Felga. Yes. Vice Chair Joshi. Yes. Trustee Moreau. Yes. Trustee Petty. Yes. And Trustee Thompson. Yes. 
Perfect. That was unanimous. And both sets of minutes are approved as submitted. Great. Then the next are additional consent items. Um, and I think perhaps um, for this block, um, I'm not sure whether we should take them individually or maybe uh, let me ask if any of the trustees have any technical issues or questions on items four, five, or six. And ignore my loud dog. I closed my door so we don't have to listen to that. Okay, then uh, are there any members of the public who would like to speak to uh, the three consent items for five and six? Appropriation of donated funds, second reading and adoption of proposed revisions to library board policy 300 and the final report from the ad hoc policy review committee. Before we take public comment, would it be appropriate for me to let you know that I'd like to make a revision to one of the uh, Yes. Consent items? Okay. Yes. So uh, agenda item number four, request appropriation of donated funds. Um, we uh, received a another check from the Friends and Foundation mm -hmm. yesterday for uh, their uh, proceeds from their quarterly proceeds from Amazon book sales. And uh, those proceeds would go into our trust fund and they're dedicated to purchasing circulating materials for the public. And the check amount is $2,381.12. So that would bring the amount that you would be requesting the city council appropriate to a total of $19,265.12. So I propose that revision for your consideration. Great. Um, and did we have any members of the public who wish to respond to any of this? I still see no members of the public in the on audience or with their hands raised, but just once again, for the viewers at home, we encourage members of the public to join our meeting via ZoomGov. You will be connected live in real, li in real time to the meeting. To join by telephone, dial toll-free toll free 833-568-8864. Toll free then enter the meeting ID 161-352-8864. If prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. To make a public comment, please raise your hand in Zoom. Or if you are connected by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. And I see a panelist with their hands raised. Oh, Bob. Does he petty? Yes, uh, I'd like to move that we amend the total uh, shown on packet page 14 for this agenda item to reflect the additional funds that Inga mentioned and bring the total to the one that she just offered to us. Yeah, the nineteen thousand two hundred and sixty-five dollars yeah, and to twelve the cents. Sixteen eight eight four. Yes. So I would like to uh, uh, move that we approve the uh, alteration of that title per what Inga shared with us. Is there? A second? I'll second. I'll second, Thompson. Thank you. All those in favor? Yes. Roll call. Roll call, please. <laughs> Definitely. First. <laughs> Chair Felgit? Yes. And Chair Joshi, I mean, Vice Chair Joshi? Yes. Trustee Moreau? Yes. Trustee Petty? Yes. And Trustee Thompson? Yes. I would now entertain a motion to approve consent items four, five, and six. Do I have a motion? So Thank moved. you. Thank you, Marcia. A second? I'll second it. Oh, go ahead, Bob. And then a roll call vote, please. Definitely. And I'm I'm sorry again, I was typing, I missed the second. Can you please let me know who who said that? Oh uh, uh, Moreau moved and Petty second. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then for the roll call vote, we have Chair Felgut. 
Yes. Vice Chair Joshi? Yes. Trustee Moreau? Yes. Trustee Petty? Yes. Trustee Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Um, and Je Jennifer, if I could, just one quick sure. comment before we move on. Um, the uh, Marsha and I have for uh, some time been the members of the Ad Hoc Policy Review Committee, and I'm pleased to um, report that we have now completed our work with the approval of items five and six, and that committee is therefore dissolved. Thank you very much. And thank, and thank Marsha and Inga for all the work with this committee. Thank you. And thank you. I would just like to chime in that that was uh, the it was a monumental task working through all those policies and uh, the um, policy of uh, revising policy 300 that was worth <laughs> worth the past many months and years because uh, that's going to be really, really a great thing for our staff and a huge uh, weight off the shoulders of any incoming library director so <laughs> congratulations thank you thank you all who participated in that effort uh, this is the end of the consent agenda this is now the time uh, for public comments public comments allows you the public to speak for a maximum of three minutes on any subject which is not on the agenda any person or group desiring to bring an item to the attention of the library board may do so during public comments or by addressing a letter of explanation uh, to the library director at Monterey Public Library. Um, are there any public, general public comments for anything not on the agenda? Once again, we encourage members of the public to join our meeting via Zoom. You will be connected live in real time to the meeting. To join by telephone, dial toll-free 833-568-884. Enter the meeting ID 161-352-8864. Then if prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. I see no hands raised, but you can raise your hand in Zoom if you're connected on the web by using the raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen. I see no hands raised and we have no members of the public joining in person. Great, thank you so much. Uh, we now move to the public appearance items. These are items uh, which are reports on action or informational issues that might stimulate public discussion, but do not require formal noticing as public hearings. Um, you are welcome to offer your comments after being recognized by the chair. And uh, at this point, uh, let's start with item seven, uh, approve a proposal to install Young Readers Mural on the library terrace. Um, and I would like at this point, I'm not sure if this is quite in sequence or not. Um, I assume we'll have a presentation, but I do wanna read into the public record that we received four letters in support of this project. And I wanna make sure that gets put into the public record. So with that, I will be quiet. And Inga, did you want to do the public presentation on this, please? Well, sure. So I'll, I'll kick it off and say a few words and then I'll turn it over to the sovereigns. So, um, um, Barbara Sovereign was a wonderful supporter of the Monterey Public Library, along with her husband, um, Mike, for many, many, many years. And um, she also was a, a, a taught reading in the schools, mm -hmm. both publicly and privately for a very long time. So she was really dedicated to inspiring the love of reading. And um, in our community and when she passed away the question was what could we do to honor her and the sovereign family um, asked of me about uh, the idea of a mural and i remembered uh, that when i was first uh, hired here um, back in 20 uh, 2002 uh, there was a mural project before uh, this body and mm -hmm. for one reason or another it didn't get completed but the um 
the wall that had been looked into was on our upstairs terrace and it was seen as an amenity and the idea was it wanted to be uh, um, the people who were proposing it wanted it to be youth friendly and involve some youth artists and so that just always stuck in my mind as something we might want to do if and when we had the opportunity so anyway sovereigns came forward and um so they they have now followed a number of steps so first of all uh a mural anywhere in the city on a city building becomes a piece of public art and public art is approved by the Museums and Cultural Arts Commission. So uh, the sovereigns followed that step and um, proposed a mural and it was approved by the commission. The second step was um, they uh, brought the idea to the Friends and Foundation, the Monterey Public Library Friends and Foundation and the Friends and Foundation uh, um, gave some seed money towards the project and then the sovereigns have said that they will donate the balance of the project costs um, to the friends and foundation to complete the project but if other people want to donate they're welcome to do so as well so then the uh, friends and foundation approved it so basically it would be a project of the friends and foundation they would contract with an artist so they would be hiring an artist and then they would be the donor donating a piece of artwork to the city and then there's a donation agreement that's a legal agreement that um, the donor fills out and the city uh, signs and then there the gift is made but because this gift would be in the library on display it really uh, made sense that it go before this body to see if there were any issues concerns um, about installation of a mural on the upstairs terrace. So that's the background. And then I have uh, John Sovereign and our artist um, who will both be speaking. So I'll take it away, John. Well, I'm gonna let my dad speak. Oh, sorry, first. Mike first. Sorry. Age before beauty. <laughs> uh, I just do wanna thank again everyone who's been involved with this process and uh, say that my wife uh, you know raised the children to use the library and they certainly did and she was involved uh, she was a director of the friends uh, she was best known for being the chocolate fountain lady she acquired the first chocolate fountain and arranged the supplies and trained people and uh, we had a very successful run until the pandemic of uh, use of the chocolate fountain at the uh, our big money raiser in those days. So uh, she's been very much involved with the library through the many years that we have been here with it. And she was very interested in reading both professionally and as a uh, charitable activities. She worked with the uh, Reading is Fundamental group, and was given an annual award uh, nationwide for her work in that uh, group, which provided uh, free books uh, to students in the schools which were of lower income. And uh, the students were allowed to select their own book, which made them happy. and. Uh, it, it sort of bothered us that Captain Underpants was the highest, no, not the, <laughs> one of the largest you, uh, author book. But uh, we really have enjoyed working with the library, and I think this uh, the will be finally a good step to remember her. And I'd like John to cover some of the details of all. Um, I'm just going to try to quickly touch on some of the main points in the proposal that was in your agenda packet. Um, I'm uh, really excited about uh, the art, the, the concept that uh, Natalia Kraza came up with really adds some depth to its depiction of both um, young people reading and what they're imagining as they read, what they're learning, um, integrating that all at the same time. It's a, a really wonderful concept. And you know, Inga, are we prepared to 
um, put the drawing up on the screen. Can, is that something we were ready to we can do? I wonder if 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 Nat, who's here, has the ability to do that. Yep, I believe I can. Hang on, just one second. Uh, it is in the agenda packet too. Yep. Right. Oh, I uh, actually, I'm wondering if um, Jennifer can allow uh, participants to share the screen. I can then show you what this beautiful piece of artwork looks like. Sorry about that. I think ours is set up to do that automatically. Yeah, it says here, host disabled participant sharing, and you're the host, Jennifer. Right. So, right um, while we try to figure that out, let me just say, um, yeah. we hope to, um, you know, implement this with, uh, you know, the, as little impact to the patrons that uh, use the, the terrace, um, you know, that we'll try to be working uh, some, you know, not during non public hours. And uh, we hope that um, we'll be able to do this somewhere between, you know, six and 10 weeks, uh, hopefully before the the rainy season starts, assuming we get some rain this year. Um, so the, yeah, this is the the current uh, design, um, and I think uh, this is a great point uh, for me to introduce um, the artist. Uh, she she calls Monterey her hometown, uh, and uh, is active in the, the local arts community. Uh, Natalia Krasin. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. I'm Natalia Corazza. And as John said, I, I was born and raised in Monterey. Um, and I do call it my hometown. And one of the things that I'm really proud of, of Monterey um, is that it's, it's this multicultural o oasis. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the mural to celebrate that while also touching on um, you know, the benefits and values that young people can get from reading. So um, yeah, that's the main thing. And, and I'm really happy with how the mural design, design came out and working with John has been great. And I think that this is such an amazing way to honor someone's life. Mm -hmm. And um, to celebrate the library as well and what a, a great resource it has been for um, the Monterey community. Thank you. And I also, sorry to interrupt, I really wanted to thank Inga for her leadership on this. Um, she's been really great at helping us uh, navigate the process and um, really appreciate the parting gift she's giving us. Um, so thank you, Inga. Also, I wanted to add that I'll be having um, a, one of the youth artists from the Youth Arts Collective, where I'm at right now, I work part-time, um, helping me on the mural. So there's some youth art involvement um, in, during the execution of the mural as well. Yeah, Marsha. I just had a couple of questions. I, I, the design is absolutely beautiful. It's, yes. I think it's just wonderful. And I think this project is just terrific. I was wondering um, what you use to paint it with and how long it will last. And then my other question was, would you be the only one painting it? It sounds like uh, you've got other people working on. So um, most murals are painted in acrylic. There are some details that, if allowed, can use spray painting that will help with the um, getting it done quickly, more quickly. Um, but most of it will be done in uh, acrylic paint, and then it will be sealed off with um, hopefully an, an anti graffiti graffiti sealant. That way, um, if in any way in the future it needs refurbishing, it can be washed away. Um, or clean really easily without affecting the the mural itself. And and it lasts. It's it's going to last like longer, yeah longer than we will, huh? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful, beautiful design. Yeah, 
Jim? I, I echo Marsh's comments. I, mm -hmm. I really like the idea and the design. And I just had a similar practical question about if there were to be, I hope it will never happen, but if there was any kind of vandalism or anything of that type um, that needed some repair, um, kind of how that would be handled. So John might be able to talk about this a little bit, but uh, the idea is that there um, part of the budget be a little bit left over for some wiggle room in, in the case in the future that part of the budget could be used for um, repairs. Yes, we intend to try to keep the uh, seed money fund that the friends keep that going as a backup to that kind of problem mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, to get another one if, if indeed the library manages to get a new building and <laughs> we want another version of this uh, that would be seed money again. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Petty. Let's see, I'm just trying to look. There we go. Um, <clears throat> if uh, my fellow trustees agree, um, we, we will be, the agenda item is to approve the proposal. So we'll be uh, voting on it. And I would like to include in any motion toward approving this because um, it's a fantastic, fantastic project. Um, I would like to include in it, it um, the consideration, is it possible in not a giant sign because I know neither John nor Mike nor Barbara like that, but is there somewhere in, you know, smaller uh, lettering, we can say either in honor of or in memory of oh, yes. Barbara Sovereign. Yeah, yeah, that was our idea. Um, oh, good. Like one of those look like the little mm -hmm. bronze plaques down on the first floor that we could have one just like that up by the mural. And maybe, you know, at some point in the future, there would be one downstairs as well. Yeah. Um, that was our, our thinking. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. I, I I may have missed it in the uh, actually very well presented uh, description here, and mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that we did have that acknowledgement, uh, you mm -hmm. know, as part of the mural. So if that's part of the proposal already, then we don't. I don't see a need to amend uh, what we will have in front of us. And um, uh, yeah, I would certainly approve it. But I wanted to make sure that that was included. Yeah, no, you're you're right that that was not included in the proposal. So that would be great to add. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Inka. Yes, I I wanted to add that um, if this installation is approved, uh, we had envisioned using the display case downstairs to sort of describe what's happening. Um, mm -hmm. that a mural is going up and who the artist is and who Barbara Sovereign was and what the process is, sort of an educational um, piece mm -hmm. so that people don't wonder, hey, what's going on? Nobody said anything, you know, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. there would be that part to it, but there would also be if you would like to contribute to this project, mm -hmm. how to make a donation to the Friends and Foundation. Um, so I just wanted to mention that that is part of the thinking as well. Excellent. Uh, before I entertain a motion to approve, can we see if there's any additional public comment besides the uh, four emails that we received? Yes, let me pull up my speech. We encourage members of the public to join our meeting via Zoom. You will be connected live in real time to the meeting. To join by telephone, dial 833-568-8864, then enter the meeting ID 161-352-8864, and if prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. I see no hands raised. Great, then I will entertain a motion to approve. Marsha? Uh, I move to uh, approve this wonderful project. <laughs> and I second Thompson. And Moreau uh, uh, moves. And then vote. Roll call, please. Yes. Chair Felgood. Yes. Vice Chair Joshi. Yes. Trustee Moreau. Yes. Trustee Petty. 
You're muted, you, Bob. You're muted, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to You got us. Yeah, I think yes. verbal confirmation. <laughs> and Trustee Thompson. Yes. Wonderful. I am so pleased uh, that we'll be working you. with you and having this wonderful, wonderful opportunity uh, to memorialize uh, Barbara's efforts and uh, uh, to bring this to our community. I too am pleased with the design. You have every element of the Monterey area in there from the cypress tree to the butterflies, <laughs> all of it. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, Thank when, you. When did it start? I just wondered when you when you plan to start painting. Actually, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> um, I think there'll be a little bit of a transition period with the new director, mm -hmm. um, but hopefully we'll get started by September. Is my hope, mm -hmm. um, and be done by November. Perfect. Thank you so very much. And uh, Chair Phil, if I could just add, add to us on, on behalf of staff, we're just so excited um, to, to see this project and mm -hmm. uh, Natalia's artworks, uh, amazing uh, to see. We're looking forward to this hopefully being one of many future public art projects and uh, the contributions uh, of the Sovereign family uh, is help, helping fund this as mm -hmm. the type of uh, public mural, public art uh, we are excited about here in Monterey. So thank you all and the artists mm -hmm. as well, of course. And uh, if we need to start sooner than September, feel free to reach out and we'll we'll connect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Wonderful. All righty. The next item on the agenda is receive update on the annual budget process and provide direction to staff. Um, Inga. Sure. So um, it seemed like a, a long, a long process to get to this point where we finally have an adopted budget. But um, something I learned uh, from our previous finance director is that a budget is simply a snapshot and things are constantly changing. So um, with the budget that was adopted, I'll, I'll just remind you um, what some of the things were that uh, we had requested that were funded. One thing is in terms of staffing, we now have a full-time library assistant two position in acquisitions where previously yeah. it was it started out hourly and then it became um, a, a RPT and then now it's been approved as full-time. And then uh, we also have similar situation with our bookmobile. Um, services coordinator. So that was hourly, then it became uh, RPT, and now it's full time. And we have a brand new um, staff member in that position. And she speaks Spanish. So we're very Sorry. lucky. And she has a strong background in uh, working in schools, working with children, teaching and being a coach in various sports. So we're very lucky to have her. Um, then we also, it was approved to hire a librarian. And so uh, that, uh, a full-time librarian, so we're very excited. And that position is uh, in the works for recruitment. And Nat is taking the lead on that because we don't want um, to slow it down just because I'm uh, walking away. And so Nat is going to stay on top of that and work with Kim to at least open a recruitment. And then the idea would be that um, we'll try to get that position filled as quickly as we can, because of course school is starting yes. next week. And uh, it's great to have uh, youth uh, librarians present for school to start. And then another thing is our uh, acquisitions budget was bumped up, which is wonderful. We're still... Um, 67% of what we had been in the past, but uh, that's um, a big improvement from the previous year when it was 50% and the year before that when it was zero. So we're uh, pleased with that. So, and then there, um, speaking of this being a, a, just a snapshot, there was something that was inadvertently left out, a mistake of where something that had been requested didn't get onto the, the proper page. And so, um, 
we're short some part-time seasonal hours for a librarian. And that's because we had asked for two full-time librarians, but only one position was carried forward. And so uh, we had said, well, if we don't get both positions, we're going to need some more PTS money. And um, so that's going to be um, part of a, a budget uh, adjustment. And that's going to be happening, we thought maybe mid-year, but it could even be sooner than that. So that's that's good news. and. Um, Finance director is aware of it. Um, uh, Nat is aware of it. City manager is aware of it. And and you know it's just one of the kind of cleanups that can happen sometimes with the budget process. There were so many moving pieces. So anyway, so that's pretty much a summary of where we are with the budget. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Trustees, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Jim. Uh, yes, I just had one question um, with the additional staff, and I realize this is something that might, you might want to wait for the new director to weigh in on, but do you have any thoughts at this point whether that would enable us to open more hours? So I would, um, I am recommending to the new director that um, he take a really good look at that, because I, I think it would be a very good idea to be open at least on Monday afternoons because we have such a big student population mm -hmm. in town uh, during mm -hmm. the afternoon and on Mondays they come to the library even though we're closed and they just hover around and sit mm -hmm. on the curb and you know it would just be wonderful to be, be able to provide services for those folks yeah. so I would say um, of course, we'll need to look at what the priorities are, whether we do Monday afternoons or we do uh, some people would like Sunday, some people would like some evening hours, um, but my vote would be for Monday and then we'll just have um, Brian Edwards, our new library director, make that determination with you and with our community. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Marcia. Yeah, I, I just want to ask Inga a little clarification about the children's. So the children's librarian has has been hired full time, but that no. So we hired a part time children's librarian, right? No. Uh, so then, what we've been working with is hourly um, librarians who have a children's specialty, a uh, specialization. So that's how we've been doing our children's programs and our summer reading um, programs geared towards elementary age um, kids is by using hourly uh, part-time workers. And so what um, happened with the budget was uh, it was approved that we have a full-time position. So that's where we are. There's a full-time position, but it's vacant and now we need to do the recruitment for it. Um, the other full-time position that is vacant that we're trying to finalize a hiring on is our local history position, and that was made mm -hmm. vacant when Sean Risco left in May, um, but we're happy to say that we are hoping we're getting closer to um, filling that position. Okay, so, so just a quick follow-up. So the children's librarian for which you are now recruiting the, with the expectation that that person will be able to accommodate the after school high school kids that come down the street because that you're also looking for because they're they're slightly my understanding is that that they're different but that you, there are people that may have expertise in both so you're looking for someone who has expertise in both so that when mm -hmm. well so uh so the idea is that uh we're going to recruit for that position and, and see what we get. It, basically, it's the classification librarian and uh, whether it is a children's specialist or a teen specialist um, will partly depend on our candidates' uh, mm -hmm. strengths. And um, I think uh, the library would be uh, tremendously served either way. Yes. Thank you. Any other trustee questions? Are there any public comments on this item? I see no hands raised currently, but once again, you can raise your hand by using the raise your hand button in the Zoom. Um, 
To join by phone, dial 833-568-8864. Enter the webinar, oh, the meeting ID 161-352-8864. And if promoted, prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. I still see no hands raised. Thank you very much. We will move on to uh, agenda item nine, receive quarterly trust fund report. Okay, so this is the report that you receive each quarter that basically covers a number of things. One is what is the current value of the trust fund budget? Uh, at the end of the year. And so if you look at um, packet page 34, there are two charts there, the second chart down, which says trust fund balance. You'll see that the balance, um, remember we haven't purchased a bulk mobile yet, um, mm -hmm. but the balance is $684,168.82. So um, that's actually pretty good considering how much we've had to rely on donations, um, and private funding these past few years. So um, the report shows that our current uh, balance in our bookmobile reserve, and that was from the Aller um, Family Trust is $171,627.27. And just a reminder that that part of that's going to be used towards replacing our current bookmobile with a sprinter van and that's a project that is 75% uh, funded by a state grant. And um, and the state grant uh, so far we've received, I forget what the percentage is, but it's 64,000 I want to say, and then um, after our first report they release a second amount and then they hold back just a little bit until they really see that, yep, we did buy a bookmobile. <laughs> um, so that's that page. And uh, were there any questions about that sort of just general picture on packet page 34? Okay, so then uh, moving on, the next two charts, so starting in packet page 35, is uh, the first chart is a revenue status report. So it just shows you how much we budgeted that we thought we might take in. And then uh, there's an error there mm -hmm. in, uh, let's see, one, two, the third column over the heading, it says January through March of 2022 but it should be April through June because this is our fourth quarter report. Um, so it shows you how much we took in in the fourth quarter and then how much uh, was received as at the end of the fiscal year. And you'll see that we projected that we would take in about $103,500, but we actually took in $200,000 $73,380.22. So that was a, a very successful year. And then, so that's that chart. And then the next chart shows uh, how, and I should say something about why, why did we think we were gonna raise 103 and then we actually got so much more. Well, one thing is um, we have traditionally always been very conservative in estimating how much money we're gonna raise because we don't know that we're gonna get a fantastic bookmobile grant from the state library, or we don't know if a bequest is going to become due or if a very generous donor is gonna to want to make a large gift. So we try to be very conservative in estimating how much we think we'll take in. So that's, that's uh, what that's about. Then the next chart is how much we've spent and if you move forward to the end of this chart, which is on packet page 36, you'll see when all the dust cleared, we'd only spent 57% of what we anticipated we would spend. And so then that's also a question, why did you spend so little? So um, just in general, again, we try to anticipate that we're going to spend more then we actually wind up spending because we don't wanna 
you know, go negative. Yeah. So that's one thing we do. But the other thing is, is to spend money. It takes staff, it takes staff time. Mm -hmm. And um, so with some things, we, we thought we would uh, be able to spend the funds and we just weren't able to get to that project. So um, what you'll see at a council meeting um, in August, we hope, is, uh, and if not August, we'll have to have Brian do it in, in September, um, is a request to reappropriate those funds that were mm. received, that were dedicated to a certain project that we just didn't get to that project. A really good example of that is our public printing system is a uh, very outdated and uh, we got some quotes on what it would cost to replace that system. The friends and foundation gave us funding for that. And we thought we were gonna be able to move that project forward, but uh, we didn't complete it before the end of the calendar year. So that money will need to be um, reappropriated by city council. And because it's dedicated, restricted money, we can't just decide, oh, let's spend it on something else mm -hmm. because uh, the donor had given it with the understanding of what it was going to be spent on. So anyway, so, so that is the conclusion of that part of the report. Were there any questions about those two charts or anything that I've said so far? Yes. Uh, Trustee Thompson. Uh, yes, uh, Inga, the only question I had was regarding the state grant. Um, I, I was a little surprised to see that uh, as a revenue for the trust fund. And I was just curious, do all the grants that the library receives go through the trust fund? Or is there something about this one that is a little different that it would go through the trust fund? No, it always goes through the, or my, in my experience, it's always gone through the trust fund. And um, partly that's because uh, the money that you don't spend in the general fund, if you don't spend it, it goes away. And so you wouldn't want to put your um, grant money into the general fund and then not get to not not complete spending it and then lose it. So yeah. but there there might be other mechanisms that other departments use. And I'm not familiar with what they are. Yeah, I, I was just curious. The other part of that is we did actually receive sixty-four thousand eight hundred in the uh, in the last quarter. Yes. So the the chart on the top of page thirty-seven doesn't seem to reflect that, um, and maybe I'm misunderstanding the chart. But it would seem to me if that was a revenue, it would be there as well, wouldn't it? So, so that's a good question, and and um, I'll just say that from the fundraising perspective and. And Mary Jane Perna, our um, fund development coordinator, soon to retire, um, can correct me if I'm wrong, but when she <laughs> looks at our fundraising success, she backs out things like big grants and big bequests, because uh, what we're really sort of reporting on when we're reporting on our fund development is how well we're doing with our um, a gifts from donors and she has a, i'm sure a more elegant way to put that just add that it's not elegant at all but i don't really think we track grants in donor perfect which is the database of record um that uh tracks individual fundraising so um grant funds are tracked in a different part of the city budget libraries record keeping a different part of the s drive okay well thank you very much that all makes sense i just was a i wasn't real clear to me how we were handling this okay other questions about uh those charts and then we could move on to the chart on uh packet page 37 which is a chart so this part of the report is uh, more the mary jane portion of the report and um I don't know if Mary Jane, you wanted to take over from here or you would just like me to finish it out because you have a different report that you're going to be talking about. Um, please go ahead because I, because of my being absent for so many weeks this past quarter, I didn't really end up preparing this. Right. So Mary Jane told me how to prepare the numbers and she's left very good instructions and that's what I did and that's how we got these charts. 
So, I mean, this chart on packet page 37. So here, this is sort of what uh, was going on in the fund development um, area. And so uh, we received um, some endowment fund contributions. And then this uh, shows you with footnote one, the current value of the endowment, which has uh, continued to decline um, because I guess the way investments are, uh, the way things are going with investments these days. So anyway, um, and then uh, we received a very significant restricted gift for our summer reading program from very generous donors. So that is on here under the MPL trust fund restricted. And then um, under unrestricted monies, some monies came in. And um, basically that we ended the total with uh, 35,750 and 89 cents. Um, and then the big projects for this quarter were, um, I think Mary Jane will talk about this more in the fund development sort of year in review uh, report, but uh, rather than doing a spring appeal, uh, followed by a month later, maybe a membership drive, because we had just ended the Friends and Foundation's first ever comprehensive campaign in April, um, National Library Week, and it had been so successful. And, um, you know, we were just so grateful. We didn't want, you know, the month, a month later to, to then send out a new appeal saying, by the way, would you, <laughs> you know, dig deep into your pockets for the library? So we thought we would delay it a little bit. And then um, uh, we sent out more of a sort of gratitude card that included an envelope if people wanted to make a gift. So that um, took a lot of planning and coordination from the fund development staff working with the Friends and Foundation. And then also um, our new uh, under staff infrastructure, our new fund development assistant, Ann Jacobson continues to work 10 hours a week and she's really becoming our donor perfect database maven. <laughs> and so we're so grateful for that. And then we did bring on Ilana Beaufort Enton, who is our new communication specialist, mm -hmm. 10 hours a week. And um, she wrote the, the exciting um, mm -hmm. press release that was sent out today about our new library director. So um, it's very, very helpful to have somebody with her skills and um, her uh, abilities on our staff. And we're, we appreciate having her 10 hours a week. And she helped work on the, uh, the appeal as well. And then the final page of the report, packet page 38, just tells you what, uh, what was spent in other areas of the budget and, or what activities took place that correspond with uh, the expenditure of trust funds. So, um, that's the conclusion of the report, but I'm happy to answer any more questions. Minga or um, Jennifer, if I could yeah. just um, interject something. I, I was really no help this last quarter. I was um, <laughs> um, helping my son get married. So I, <laughs> so I was really not on the scene uh, and, as I mentioned, but uh, uh, when Inga mentioned the fact that we didn't want to do a customary spring appeal, um, having so recently announced the campaign, the other uh, factor that we should emphasize to make you aware of is that the Friends and Foundation has been kind of quietly um, rethinking the whole membership notion um, and the annual solicitation of people for small amounts of money for dues and just the whole notion um, of being a membership and events-based organization, as you well know, those of you who've been on the board for the last three or four years, has been intentionally being shifted toward more of a major gifts, individual giving model. So that's why we sort of thought, okay, we'll do a, a kind of solicitation light um, gratitude mm -hmm. card um, that will combine the usual spring campaign and 
and will stand in for a membership campaign um, as the Friends and Foundation um, figure out kind of how to retire that concept. Yes, and thank you, Mary Jane, for saying that. And um, our the consultants we worked with that recommended we create a foundation, Library Strategies, um, they are also the Friends and Foundation for the St. Paul Public Library. And they consider all of their donors friends. And um, they're very warm about calling people friends. And when they do campaigns, you can get a lawn sign that says, I'm a friend of the library. <laughs> um, but you don't have to choose, are you a bookworm? Or are you a literary <laughs> lion? Or you know, something in between? You know, you made a gift, you're our friend. And um, so we're going to probably, or the library will probably circle back at some point, library director and friends and foundation uh, president perhaps with library strategies and say how to how can we you know elegantly shift over more to that model mm -hmm. any comments or questions seeing none is there any public input on this item I see no participants with their hand raised, but once again, you can press the raise your hand function in Zoom <laughs> or dial 833-568-8864 and enter the meeting ID 161-352-8864. Okay. I see no hands raised. I think it's safe to move on. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number 10, receive annual report on fund development activities for fiscal year 2021-2022 and approve fund development plan for fiscal year 2022-2023. Uh, Mary Jane, or was Inga going to, who's presenting this? I'm glad to do this one. Uh -huh. I just wanted to just say quick introductions. So, um, this is a report that uh, Mary Jane has pulled together for us. Of course, she talks things through with me. That's the relationship between the fund development coordinator and the library director is she has the expertise. Um, and But together we kind of work through what we want to recommend as goals and so forth. But I just have to say, because this is her last report, <laughs> um, that uh, she's just been, and I think all of you will agree, just such a joy to work with. And she has just raised our fund development program to uh, new heights and in a, in a very humble way. You know, she doesn't take credit for it all, but I would say that she should take a lot of credit for it. Um, so anyway, it's just been really great to work with a professional of her caliber, who is also so kind and, um, great to work with. And so thank you, Mary Jane. And um, we wish you all the best with your re-retirement. <laughs> <laughs> and if you ever wish to come out of retirement, <laughs> you know who needs you. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Um, it was my huge pleasure to do something so unexpectedly <laughs> at the end of my career and so um, so rewarding for the best brand in the city of Monterey. I'll just say, you know, uh, there are other worthy nonprofits, but I really think the library in the future has such a bright future um, philanthropically and otherwise. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And uh, for this chance to review the, uh, um, the last year, um, and to preview the recommendations that Inga and I put together for next year. Um, just stop me with a holler at any time if you have questions. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of gallop through a few high points. Or in this case, as I begin, a low point, which is that um, there's no way to uh, to uh, make more pleasant the fact that we actually fell short this year of the goal that we had set. Um, uh, hindsight is truly 2020. And um, the I think the primary takeaway uh, for me is that though the library's um, 
out of the infant, the library fund development programs out of its infancy, infancy stage, it's still in a stabilizing growing up adolescent stage. And so wild swings um, uh, uh, um, are what we saw this year. I think that I would have felt irresponsible a year ago to announce a goal that was less than 10% of an increase mm -hmm. over the previous year. Um, after the um, large and wonderful increases we've had the previous two years, I just would have felt like I wasn't setting our sights high enough. So, um, uh, uh, however, as you can, if you take a look at packet page 50, where we have kind of a, um, a running chart showing um, in recent years um, what's been raised by grand total and from how many gifts and um, in for the last two years what our goal was and then what our actuals were um, that's where you can see that the goal this year was uh, 10 percent more than 2021's 233,146 uh, dollars um, we actually raised 189,958. Um, I can uh, put some of this in, um, in uh, some of this is put into perspective on the following page on uh, page 42, um, the four bullets that are um, at the top of that page. Um, and I'll just say as an aside on the, on the, front, on the top line, uh, last year's results, uh, it should be last year's result as a, as a singular, um, uh, just a typo, but those four bullets um, explain some of the reasons why the shortfall occurred. Our biggest donor who had um, gave twice as much the previous year as um, our donors, it's a, a couple, um, gave half that much, less than half that much last fiscal year. Um, as Inga and I mentioned in the quarter, quarterly report, um, two fewer mailings took place um, than in the same period. Um, there were no bequests of any size, small or large. Um, and then probably um, the other biggest factor along with the, the major gift um, total not being commensurate with the previous year is that this is sort of how campaigns work. They mm -hmm. ramp up attention and uh, garner um, uh, publicity and attention from donors and beyond donors for an intense period of time that has a beginning and an ending. And then there's a plateauing afterwards. Um, the, goal, the hope and the goal is that um, after a campaign, you have a new plateau, you're at a new level that really have raised sites in sort of a permanent fashion, stabilized for a while and go on to another campaign. But those are some of the reasons that help put into perspective um, our shortfall on our declared goal last year. Um, the other um, kind of best practice um, that I'll mention is that most um, mature organizations that I've worked for uh, look at um, funds raised in its, uh, uh, with a, a rolling three-year average or a rolling five-year average, which smooths out the bumps and helps you see the big picture. Um, let's see. Um, uh, with um, activity objectives, um, let me say um, that we concluded the campaign, I think is the, the really big achievement that occurred during um, last fiscal year. Um, and to uh, one way um, that's uh, described at the bottom of page 42 and top of page 43 is one way to look at the campaign's financial success is that um, uh, the library usual um, running rate of raised funds, or the usual rate at which we, um, it, um, over the previous five years, had um, raised funds, 
was um, enhanced um, during the 18 month period by about a hundred and just shy of $150,000. So that's, if we kind of, um, if we look at what had been going on before the campaign and create kind of a baseline, then we can look at our success during the campaign and realize that we really did raise about $50,000 a year if you ask, well, it was only 18 months. So um, $148,000 over the 18 month period. Um, uh, with, um, in this third section where I mentioned um, infrastructural objectives, because uh, organizations are always working on its um, activities and its achievements, but also on kind of improving the health of the um, the health of the underpinnings that um, uh, fuel the fund development program. We saw a parallel shortfall in the number of gifts uh, and gift transactions um, over the previous fiscal year. Uh, as pay, the chart on page fifth. Um, shows um, the, those two campaign years and two early pandemic years of 2021 and 21-22, you can see that we raised respectively 100, oh no, excuse me. It was really only in 2021, I was um, mistakenly looking at the goal. Um, so just in 2021, we nearly doubled the number of um, gifts that we'd raised. Oh, excuse me, I just see that my laptop's needing to be plugged in. I'm very sorry. But before I fade away. Sorry about that. The realities. Uh, um, working on the laptop, um, page 50. That, that great upsweep of 100, 802 gifts last year, um, I think was the result both of the campaign and also because as I understand it, when I look at what was done before my arrival, the, um, we were asking support from a kind of diminishing number of um, constituents. And um, I took us back sometimes to 2011 and the like, because we were able to attract um, donors back into the fold who hadn't given in a long time. So I think those are the two factors well in how we pumped up the number of gifts. And at least we um, maintained pretty well, um, uh, though we didn't continue to increase the number to 850. Um, let's see. Um, I could move to say a few words about the plan for next year. Um, if no one has any questions. So I'll do that. I, I have a comment. Oh, and it looks like Bob Petty has a question. Good. Trustee Petty. Um, I, I don't have a question. I have a uh, comment uh, and looking at the chart that Mary Jane has been referring to on packet page 50 that shows the amounts over uh, a number of years. <clears throat> kind of like with the stock market. I mean, unless you're a day trader, which Monterey Library is not similar to, um, th I think the appropriate way to look at um, increases or decreases in earnings or income, or in this case, donations maybe, is uh, with the perspective of not a single snapshot or a single day of trading in the stock market, but <clears throat> over time. And, uh, you know, not over centuries or even decades, but over a reasonable length of time. And so, you know, if you're an investor and you lose money one year, that doesn't mean you didn't make money the previous year, nor that you won't make money the following year. And if you, um, when I saw this and I said, well, geez, uh, the 2019 and 2020, those are pretty unusual years 
compared to the previous four on this chart. And if you look at what was brought in last year, the 2021, 189, almost $190,000. And you compare that with 2018, 19, kind of the pre-pandemic level. So I'm looking at the 128,000 figure there in that column. That's a difference of almost $62,000, which is 48.35, almost 50% gain. And if you amortize that over two or three years, you can see that from 2018 to 2021, we were actually improving by something like 16% a year on average over those years, those three years from the 2018 amount to the 2021 amount. So if somebody told me, hey, uh, we have something going here and you'll increase over the course of three years, an average of 18%, I'd say, get started. <laughs> and uh, if you keep that up, you know, way to go. And so, you know, looking at it from just a three or four year perspective, I, I think these um, figures are something that we should be pleased with and not something that we should be scratching our head and wondering if something went wrong because, you know, from again, from 2018 to 2021, that's a difference of almost $62,000 which is over 48%, which is about 16% more each year than we did in 2018. So uh, I think that's pretty good. And, you know, uh, not, not discouraged at all. Good. I, I don't think we should be, but I, did, I do think I owe you an explanation on a, on a shortfall. So. Well, see, I wouldn't even look at it as a shortfall. <laughs> I mean, if you say, well, we're gonna get 10% more, 10% more than a gigantic amount yeah. may be 16% more of a smaller amount. And, you know, in absolute terms, it could come out to the same numbers, same amount of dollars and cents. And so we have to have, I think, a, a, a realistic perspective on, you know, what is uh, uh, success and what is uh, really lack of success. And I don't see lack of success here at all. Great. Um, Jennifer, shall I move on to please next year? Um, so um, with that in mind, I've set a sober 5% um, uh, increase over our 21, 22, yes, over our 21, 22 actuals. Um, I set a 5% goal feeling that that was, um, uh, wise to do at this point, um, since our the resources that we're going to have for fund development are going to be um, steady state, um, and there's no large staff of fundraisers coming aboard. Um, I think that's probably pretty sound. Um, the um, I will say that I think that the the appointment of new leadership in any setting where I've ever worked is always um, a, a starts a period of time where um, a, an organiz a lot of eyes um, and ears turn to um, uh, watch what's going on. And um, there's a honeymoon period of interest. And that it, uh, I think there's, if, if activities, and publicity can be arranged so that um, attention uh, can be maintained for a while after the new director's arrival. I think that there's um, every chance of having another really good fundraising year. Um, let's see. Um, they, uh, uh, as far as activity um, that I recommended, um, uh, the calendar that's on packet page 51 um, and, and through 53 um, you know isn't uh, isn't a prescription to be followed in a rote sense but um, if the new fund development um, if future fund development uh, coordinator st uh, staff or are um, at all like me it's great to just see the backbone and see the arc of the year and kind of 
help you have a little um, something to lean on in terms of what work products often um, might be expected to be worked on next. Um, I think that um, in doing all of that, so that's, that's sort of the game plan. Um, but I think that the, the mindset to have that I hope is um, in place going forward is um, th that it, it sounds a little crass, the old 80-20 rule that 80% of the money comes from 20% of the people. It's a very salesy thing and it's not really my style, but it's what happens. So if, um, if, if staff can manage to keep their sights on where the money is um, and on the uh, major donors or um, donors who've given many years in a row substantial gifts, um, that's, that's sort of the, um, that's how I see the calendar um, most, pro most profitably for the library um, enacted next year. Um, other uh, activities noted, and I don't think that there's any need to go through all of them here. They're, they're in writing to be studied later. Um, but um, framing a compelling big idea for Monterey County Gives uh, 2022, 2022 um, which has been, I have not been involved because I was away, but Inga's been working really for months uh, with the thinking um, behind the um, proposal that will be submitted. It has been submitted. And it was submitted earlier today by Inga. Um, Ilana worked on the proposal with her and it was nice this year to see, wow. as I kind of watched my email from afar, to see the wow. fund, fund development committee wow. and the president of the Friends and Foundation um, uh, reviewing the draft, you know, uh, from not from the point of view of getting out their number two pencils and making corrections, but from the point of view of wanting to be part of the vision as it was forming and um, to be generating ideas already about um, raising the challenge gifts and how to proceed. So I think that um, Inga, I do, you should probably say a word or two about the proposal because it's exciting. I would love to. So um, the proposal that was submitted to Monterey County Gives today, and just to remind you is um, Monterey County Gives invites uh, different nonprofits to submit their big idea. And then they always get far more uh, wonderful big ideas than they can take on as part of their fundraising program. And so it's always a question, will we get accepted or not? And by we, I mean the Friends and Foundation um, said, you know, it's on their behalf that the proposal goes through. But the big idea, which I think will be a big idea, whether it's, uh, whether it becomes a part of MC Gives or not, is to um, do some refurbishing and refreshing of the youth services area. So we know that we're kind of in a holding pattern with building improvements because we have such significant need to uh, renovate the building um, you know, from the inside out and to expand the building. But in the meantime, um, the idea is to work with a consultant and then work with furniture providers and so forth just to freshen up that area and give it more of a wow factor so that kids are really attracted to it. And also that there's a more focus on it being a learning environment. So we did take away all the toys um, that we used to have out on a rotating basis in that area because of COVID. And um, so we haven't put that sort of stuff back in. A lot of libraries have these sort of educational panels that um, encourage sort of an interactive, you know, conversation between the child and the parent and that sort of thing. So there are all kinds of really interesting, what I was trained to call manipulatives that help um, because there are 
all different ways that kids develop their literacy skills. And, and so there's like interacting and sharing and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so just looking at that space with fresh eyes and, and um, renovating it and maybe, you know, more colorful shelving than we have now and um, little nooks where readers can read, just um, you know, kind of thinking all that through. And with the idea that no walls would be torn down, no um, you know, windows removed, it would just all be something that is movable. So when we do eventually expand our building, um, that cool um, you know, things hanging from the ceiling or whatever they might be um, could move uh, with, the collection to the new area that the collection is going to be housed in. So that's the big exciting idea. And the Friends and Foundation want to put together a committee of parents to talk about um, what they really hope to see. And then also uh, work maybe some, get some pro bono advice from some architects about uh, what sorts of things to do. And they've also tapped the creative ideas of Lauren Cohen, who is the director of My Museum, um, which is a children's museum here in Monterey. So it looks like it's going to be a very exciting project. And I, I think it might go forward even if it doesn't get accepted as an MC Gives fundraiser, just because it seems like it would be a neat thing to do. And we could all feel excited, <laughs> keep saying, oh, we. But anyway, um, you know, the community can feel excited about putting their money towards seeing some, you know, results. Thanks, Inga. Yes. Um, um, other points mentioned in the calendar and in the report um, involve um, my probably overly detailed um, recommendations about um, the timing of appeals and um, uh, how I would sequence things if I were still running the zoo. So those are in writing there. Um, I want to mention one uh, which seemed really too aspirational when I first drafted this report in June, and that's that we would somehow be able to produce and distribute the, um, a brief annual report and donor listing um, in the summer, in the late summer. Um, in the past, as you know, um, or as you probably remember, we've included it with the fall solicitation. Um, to save mailing costs and also because to, there was just too much to do. So it was, just seemed like the only practical approach was to do it all at once. Um, and um, so we thought about the fact that Inga was going to be retiring. And some, anyway, somehow by hook or by crook, um, through effort on Inga's part that was um, in time that she did not have available for this to do, um, with some great contributions from Ilana and from Ann Jacobson, who pulled the best reports that I've ever made an honor roll with before. Um, it's uh, this brief one pager has gone to the mailhouse, and it you could you could be getting it tomorrow. Uh, I got the invoicing got right before the board meeting started, so. Um, this does not have a solicitation envelope inside, which is, of course, against my religion. But in this case, it seemed like it might be a, uh, a good time to do another thank you, um, another kind of acknowledgement of what a big fundraising effort we've been through, and also punctuate Inga's um, time as director and open the door for Brian. So it's going to be received in August. So you can still make gifts, but there won't be an envelope in there to do it. Um, I just wanted to say something, Mary Jane, quickly. Um, so we did think it would be kind of awkward for Brian to have to do a year in review of what, um, you know, the impact of all the gifts had been because he, he wasn't here. And so that would be kind of an awkward thing to have the new person have to work on. So we thought, let's, let's get it out quickly and have it be sort of this, you know, uh, thank you to all these wonderful donors and sort of like a, a taste of look at what an exciting future we have. So that seemed like a good idea. And then I did want to say another thing about MC Gives, uh, which is I talked over the concept with Brian. Um, you'll probably remember that he has um, building renovation experience. 
on his resume and his and so he uh, is very familiar with different vendors and different sort of cutting edge uh, educational things that libraries are doing with their youth areas. So I also think it's a great project to be uh, launching when you have a new director with those talents. So that's just a quick little piece of information. Now I'll let, give the floor back to Mary Jane. Um, let me wind up. Um, I um, have, um, am hoping that we can um, identify as many opportunities to steward donors, let them know, you know, thank them again, um, um, show them what we've accomplished with their gifts um, as possible, um, and hope that can be kind of a guiding principle in the year ahead. Um, and um, kind of as a segue to stewardship, or it, 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 there are, as soon as it becomes a little more practicable and attractive for people to gather. Um, I'm hoping that at least a handful of events can be reinstituted, re um, focusing on our major donors, our 1849 Legacy Society of Donors, who, uh, people who have supported the endowment um, and who have um, made uh, arrangements in their trusts or wills for the library. Uh, if that's um, one of my regrets about our impact report is that we could not squeeze that roster onto the impact report. So Ilana and I've already talked about another way of doing that and kind of linking that into an e-blast down the way, but I hope we can continue to highlight that group. Um, and then the other group just being the reg uh, people who have made very modest gifts, but done so every year without fail for 15 years. We have quite a few of them. And that is just a great constituency for planned gifts. Um, and I think I keep saying I'm almost winding up, but I think that I am finally now winding up. Oh, the um, in this section that uh, I numbered number four and talked about uh, looking ahead, I wanted to make a couple comments. The first bullet um, uh, mentions the eventual need at some point to replace or upgrade the donor database. And rereading this report, this plan this week, I sort of wished I had made that the first bullet and I wanted to frame um, uh, in, for the record at this meeting that that I don't see this happening in the next fiscal year. I think it's much longer term. Um, changing a database and a database migration, even for a relatively small database, is not for the, uh, what's the phrase? Not for the tenderhearted, not for the fainthearted. And it takes, it takes leadership and it takes a ton of staff work and it involved David's time. And so I just don't, I think when the time is right, um, it'll be clear um, uh, that the library might want a database that makes it a little easier to um, focus on major gift uh, work on, on uh, constituency, uh, individual constituent, con the managing of relationships with individual constituents. Um, our current database has a lot going for it, but that's probably its Achilles heel. Um, the other, um, the next two bullets are ones that um, Inga's already touched on earlier in the report when she um, mentioned um, our work with li library strategies three or four years ago. Um, I think that this is a kind of a, going to be kind of a stock taking time for the Friends and Foundation, which has reached a certain point of maturity and gotten through, you know, very healthily gotten through its um, it, it's transformation from a friends group to a friends and foundation. And I think that, um, as Inga said, um, uh, touching base with the library strategies consultants or with some similar um, entity um, to look at our strategic planning um, and see how we want to um, 
veer the path ahead is a, a good idea and an idea that will help keep the Friends and Foundation and the um, library administration firmly on the same page. Uh, and as a segue to that point, I think that there's um, some probably some stock taping, stock taping that um, can be made in the not too distant future um, uh, with the library in the city and the Friends and Foundation, just to evaluate how the relationship's working um, and um, codify and clarify what needs um, documentation and um, not mess with something that's not broken. So um, to kind of examine those features. So that is, that's the plan. And I look forward to seeing what happens in the months and years ahead. Are there any questions from trustees? Yeah, Marsha. I just had a comment. Um, I, I just want to thank you for, yes. for leaving the, um, for leaving these recommendations for the next uh, iteration to pick up. Um, it, it's, you know, it's really, it's really going to help, I think, to jumpstart uh, future fundraising efforts in, in, in a wonderful way. So not only will people know, the next group know where we are, but, but uh, you've laid out a path forward, which is, which is really wonderful. So um, I, I just wanted to I think that was great. And to uh, to say, I hope that you'll uh, become a friend of the library <laughs> and stay with us in your uh, in your next phase. Um, I will. I will see some of you on Sunday. And oh, yes. uh, Bill, I saw Bob Petty today, although briefly, and I was running, Bob, so sorry for that. But yes, I'll be in Monterey as much as possible. That, that is that is wonderful. And and then my 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 little question, I guess, to Inga is, um, I mean, I know it's not possible to replace Mary Jane, but is there an effort to put somebody in that chair who can pick up where she left off? Or? So yes, we have been recruiting since February, October. I believe. October. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> but who's but, counting? Who's yeah. counting? Exactly. Who's but, um, <laughs> we do have we do have a finalist who is going Excellent. through, um, has uh, received a conditional offer, and is uh, going through the next step. So we hope to be able to announce a new person um, by the end of, uh, if not next week, the following week. Uh, the challenge is just the um, un the training <laughs> and how that will work with both, um, Mary Jane and I no longer with the organization. But um, I must say that Mary Jane's left really good notes. She has, um, you know, made a calendar, and um, there are people in place like Anne Jacobson who is our database maven who can say, oh, well, Mary Jane typically would do this kind of thing at this time or that kind of thing. So, and then we, um, the candidate was interviewed by our um, current president of the Friends and Foundation and the incoming president. So they've both met um, the candidate. And um, so, so they'll be able to communicate things there as well. And, um, of course, Mary Jane and I are um, available for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other trustee comments or questions? Yeah, Jim. I, I had a couple of comments, but maybe I should wait until after uh, you request public input. All righty. Um, do we have any public input on agenda item 10? There are currently no attendees watching the meeting. Mm -hmm. Just Can I have your attention, please. The library will be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> then, if, if I could, Jennifer, I, I did Go have uh, 
two, two, two and a half comments. Um, one, I just wanted to uh, echo uh, Marsha's comments once mm -hmm. again, that um, I thought Mary Jane did an excellent job of laying out not only the reports that were called for here, but also more detail in I'm terms of um, thoughts about where we should be going from here. Something that I think if I were coming into this position, I would find extremely helpful, both for mm -hmm. the uh, fund development coordinator and also for the new director. So thank you very much for, for all your work on that. But even more so, thank you for all your work in the last couple mm -hmm of years you have done a great job for the library um and just been a delight to work with i've really enjoyed my interactions with you you're the utmost professional and just we've benefited we have all benefited both uh organizationally and personally from interacting with you and i thank you so much for all of that and um at the appropriate time i'd be happy to make a motion to approve the fund development plan for fiscal year 22 23 but i'll wait until other trustees might have comments any other comments from other trustees seeing none do you want to go ahead and make your motion jim I'd be happy to. I'd, I'd like to move that uh, the board approve the fund development plan for fiscal year 22-23 as presented. Second. Uh, Moreau seconds. Thompson uh, moves. And roll call vote, please. Chair Felga? Yes. Vice Chair Joshi? Yes. Uh, Trustee Moreau? Yes. Trustee Petty? Oh, you're muted. Yes. <laughs> Thompson. Yes. Thank you. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item 11, receive quarterly report on library director's work plan. Inga. Okay. Well, uh, the, the, the time is, is getting late, so I don't want to slowly um, walk you through um, a lot of this you're aware of, but I just thought it would be good to, um, I think. Excuse me, Inga, can I interrupt just for a yeah. second? Uh, as she pointed out, we're, time's running out, and I just heard the gentle voice on the library loudspeaker say that they're closing in 15 minutes. So I wanted to ask, will we be able to continue this meeting past 6 p.m.? Yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to make sure we had uh, more than just. 13 and a half minutes available. Sure. So, <laughs> Thank um, you. sorry to interrupt. That's fine. So, uh, I, I just thought uh, it's a good opportunity to put a pin, I think is the right phrase, a pin in uh, these different projects. So, we kind of know, you know, what was accomplished, mm -hmm. what was left undone, so that um, a new uh, director coming on mm -hmm. and new leadership can kind of say, okay, hmm, did mm -hmm. we, we just still see this as a high priority or, or not, mm -hmm. and um, fresh eyes can sort of see, oh, well, if this was something that we wanted to accomplish, it could be done this or that way. So um, there are some things that were finished, some things that weren't finished. And uh, I just thought I'd quickly mention some things that um, didn't move uh, forward, didn't get much traction. And then that can be something that uh, you can wonder with the new director about what might be uh, a good strategy to go forward and he might have done something very different where he's from and, and that'll be a great fresh perspective. So one thing is the annual performance evaluations. I had uh, been planning to roll out a new system working with HR um, and then use that opportunity just to have everybody in the organization, regardless of how long they've worked for the library, do an annual um, evaluation or receive an annual evaluation. Some departments um, do that very well. Uh, police is an example where, wow, they would not go forward without um, doing the evaluations of their officers uh, very frequently. So anyway, so that's that's one thing uh, to be looked at. And it's a, a great opportunity when you have a brand new person to say, yeah, let's mm -hmm. sit down and talk about goals and objectives and, and that yeah. sort of thing. And let's set a, a plan that we can then visit again in a year and check in. Uh, yeah throughout the year. So, and I know that um, Nat has a great experience with that sort of thing. And so he'll be uh, very helpful. And we have a new um, HR director who I'm sure has ideas about that as well. Then um, we were gonna do some cleanup with the budget, but that didn't happen. Um, 
because our assistant finance director uh, moved on to other opportunities, but I think that that still will happen with our new finance director. And um, I think there's other departments which are in the situation, which is where um, the funding for different staff positions has wound up in a different part of the budget than, than we want it to be. And actually mm -hmm. in our case, in the library, we had multiple divisions and we probably don't need to have as many divisions anymore. So we had a youth division and an extensions division and a uh, technical services division mm -hmm. and a um, technology division. And so that can be kind of rethought. And then the clumps of money, it's not we're going to change the bottom line, but the, where the, how the money is clumped together could be moved around and cleaned up. So that's uh, something that and um, can I chime in on just those two items sure. very quickly? Um, yeah. The uh, performance management side, it's been a priority for HR for some time. It's on the work plan uh, to uh, update our uh, HR software to uh, something called NeoGov Perform, and it would be implemented citywide. But right now, with so many recruitments happening, it will probably be in the second half of the year when we'll yeah. begin to implement that. We're starting the, the pro planning process. Uh, now, but um, HR is down a, a couple of staff members too due to parental leave and, and other things. On the uh, finance side, just rest assured uh, for uh, Library Board of Trustees uh, members, we typically do a mid-year budget adjustment in mm -hmm. later in the year, usually in the, the fall or uh, December. In this case, because there were a couple um, errors we found, the game plan here is to take those uh, changes those fixes to council on September 6th. So we're planning on doing that sooner than later. Mm -hmm. So rest assured, we, again, these will be fully supported by uh, city manager's uh, office and, and no need to worry. And we have funds available to make those, those tweaks. So thank you. Yes, thank you. That's that's uh, great for the latest updates. Thank you, Nat. Um, and let's see. Uh, we... Let's see. Um, a highlight, of course, is that we uh, you approved a, um, a, a justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging plan. And so now uh, it'll be an opportunity for the new director to say, okay, here's how we're going to execute. Here's the priorities. Here's a timeline. So that's a really exciting thing that's on the horizon. Um, and now I'm on packet page 58. Uh, I mentioned um, that we had wanted to look at a um, automated materials handling system mm -hmm. and just get a better sense of that if that was something that would really give us the return on investment that we had hoped for and should we pursue it. And I'm pleased to say that we met with FE Technologies, who did our RFID yesterday. Kim and David and I met with representatives and they're gonna work up some numbers for us. So we'll have some fresh numbers. And then um, it even more um, important than that is that the incoming library director, Brian Edwards has experience implementing um, automated materials handling. So he has really great experience there. And the, you know we wanna redo our numbers and see, is this gonna be a good savings for us? Do we have the right volume to achieve mm -hmm. a savings at this time, or do we need to postpone it until we do a big renovation of the building? So anyway, so that is, um, we're going to be getting some numbers though, so that's great. Um, and let's see, and the, I mentioned before that we want to upgrade our printing system. I mentioned that um, when I took Brian um, on a walkthrough last week when I spent several hours with him. And so we know that's on the horizon. We have the funding for it. And our ISD um, division head is aware of that being a, a project as well. Um, Bookmobile is, uh, Kim is shepherding that whole process <laughs> and is uh, in the process of submitting our first report on where we are with things. Um, the sad news from our vendor is that uh, it looks like there are delays now with mm -hmm. um, how long it's going to take uh, once the contract's completely signed and how uh, for delivery. But they're still the the new dates that they're estimating are still better than the competitors. So, 
Mm -hmm. um, and and also I should mention that uh, Brian Edwards has experience working, it just happens, working with this very same vendor on oh, two bookmobiles. So that's great. And I think Inga, it was, I think, uh, not to exceed 280 days after receipt of chassis was the language that uh, right. just to manage expectations, it's it's quite a ways out, but we're getting the contract through as soon as we can as ASAP and hopefully get that signed and start the clock. Yes, <laughs> and I should say thank you to Nat who um, so I'm turning I'm over that part of the project to. Please bring any items for checkout to the self check or the library help desk at this time. And <laughs> 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 let's see um we where are we on packet page 59 um we want to look again at where we are with reopening is it time to put all the furniture back out is it time to reopen the quiet study room um is it time to put the computers back and mm -hmm. um i think the answer is still no we need to proceed cautiously but that is a an it's an opportunity to look at that. And, and I would recommend that we really look at those meeting room spaces or the quiet study room, for instance, and see if there might be some higher priorities for what to use that space for than having it be a quiet study area because it's it's uh, with fewer staff on the floor, it's mm -hmm. going to be a hard to um, oversee what kind of behavior takes place mm -hmm. in that room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it could be a teen space, but it need to be supervised. It could be uh, some other kinds of spaces, even a teen space. I'm sorry, teen space, or even a, if we were trying to help the Friends and Foundation through an agreement, find an ongoing store space, maybe. I think it's too big for that. But And then finally, um, regarding MOVAC and the idea of a combined catalog, I really think that is you know, a, a project that needs to be pursued. The challenge has been with all the sort of operational challenges that directors have had just trying to have staff and with um, uh, that sort of thing, it hasn't really moved forward. But I think with the county having selected COHA as their vendor, this is a great time to revisit uh, having a combined catalog and what different models we might follow and would there be a revenue opportunity for us because we have a staff member who's so knowledgeable about how to make COHA do various things. And um, there's a COHA conference coming up in September. It People can attend it virtually, so that might be the route that we have to take because that September is pretty soon, but um, that would be an opportunity to meet uh, representatives from some of the consortia and it's in Kansas, where um, I think the whole state almost is uh, public libraries are using COHA and they have different consortia. So anyway, so that's that's a thing to to pay attention to as well. And that concludes my report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Any of the trustees have questions? Yeah, Trustee Petty, please. Very quickly, um, I, I there are a number of websites that I use frequently. And nothing drives me crazier than when I go on one day and they've changed the whole layout and the look of the website, even if in the long run it's an improvement. It just, you know, confusing. I just go cross eyed. So uh, <laughs> on packet page 58, you're talking about, I think, changing the templates for the library's web pages. Could you say a little bit about that? Because I'm thinking one day I'm going to go on to the library website, and I'll hardly recognize it, and I won't know what to do or how to find anything. So oh, means. thank you. I, I, I didn't mean to skip over that, but um, that's a great question. I'm excited about that. So that did actually happen to you, um, and I'm trying to think when that would have been. Uh, Nat knows, but we, we changed our um, content management system, our CMS, um, from DNN to mm -hmm. Revise, and um, staff and uh, members of the public began uh, pulling their hair out because, and I know uh, <laughs> Trustee Moreau mentioned it to me, it's just very hard to find different content that um, uh, people are looking for on the way we have utilized the existing templates. 
in setting up the library information. And so we had hoped to just roll out a nice um, presentation. Here's the new website. Here's how to find things. But uh, we postponed that presentation because there were just some things that weren't working very well for us. But um, so we've taken some funds and put them towards working with Revise to come up with templates that are specifically for the library and the kind of uh, special needs the library uh -huh. has. And an example is um, most of the other city departments don't need a search box front and center that says search the catalog. But a lot of our customers don't distinguish between the library catalog, which is available on the web and a library website, which has information about programs and databases and um, fundraising opportunities and all that kind of stuff. So, so when people come to our website, they want to see very clearly our search box uh, to get to the catalog. So anyway, so those are some of the things that uh, we had a good meeting with Revise about, and um, they've come up with some new templates for us. And also, we've given them now feedback about how we would like the a few changes and they're going to come back with is close. some design uh, a new design for us I'll, I'll add to inga and respond to the the question august 11th 2021 was when we launched the new website uh, and uh, so inga was inga was close but um i appreciate that it's very good feedback trustee petty we yeah. try to be mindful of not changing the design and the navigation too often otherwise you're absolutely correct people will get confused it's it, it takes time but we we do believe this will be an improvement to navigation because it is we're trying to strike the balance between uh, ensuring that it's a, a website within uh, the the city's overall template but also has user friendliness and navig navigability i guess is the right word for uh, library users, and I think this move, and thanks to Inga's leadership, uh, she she's the one uh, who's spearheading this entire effort, working the staff, uh, and, and David uh, Kuhn as well. It's it's been really positive. Is there an arrival date for when this is going to actually uh, flip over from what it is now to what you're envisioning? We don't have an arrival date yet because the templates aren't quite finalized. And once they're finalized, we're going to ha have to see how long it will take to populate the new templates. And then that will all be done behind the scenes. So there won't be any change to its current look until we get the um, new templates all set up the way we want. And then we'll flip the switch and then we'll have a presentation. Um, David will make a presentation at the uh, a board meeting saying here's the new here's the new uh, look and here's why we made these design choices. And I want to thank Kim too. She's uh, taken a, a great role in looking at it with uh, David and I and then actually conveying um, a lot of our comments to directly to revise. So appreciate that. Thank you. Any other? trusty questions or comments. Is there any input from the public on this item? We have no attendees in the meeting. I can okay. provide that phone number one more time if you think that's necessary. Probably not. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll move on to informational reports and staff comments. Uh, item 12, receive financial report. Item number 12. Uh, I don't really have anything to add to that report, but I'm happy to take any questions if there were any questions about it. Any of the trustees have anything? Again, um, if there's any member of the public who wishes to provide input on this particular agenda item, now is the time. And again, if there's nobody in attendance, we can move on to... Confirm there are no attendees. Okay, let's move on to number 13, receive statistical report. You have the printed report here. And uh, just a great reminder, I got confused myself about this, is that um, 
this report shows activity for a particular month, in this case, June, and then it shows uh, activity for a 12 month period that includes uh, the month of June. And um, it, it's set up in, in this particular system where it'll compare one year to the next year. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we want to do is we don't really need to see what happened in um, 19, no, in 1920, or is it 2021? We don't really need to see, we don't need to compare our current open status to what happened when we were closed to the public. And so we want to see the previous year. And in order to do that, we have to print two pages. And so we have two pages and we can look at what happened in 2018-19 on packet page 66 and look at those numbers. For instance, um, our circulation for the year was 407, 879 items. And then we flip back to packet page 65 and we can look at what was our circulation um, this year that's just closed and it was um, uh, closer to, it was 257. So that's how we, we compare ourselves one open year to another open year. Anyway, and um, that's all I have in terms of remarks about that report. Did anybody have any questions or comments? <clears throat> nice to see that we're starting to rebound. And it's also good to see that the people are, 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 have found the patron app and are starting to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, I did, I, I did have one, just one quick comment. Sure. I, I just wanted to highlight that um, the number of volunteer hours at 446 is just a wonderful mm -hmm. amount of volunteering and just th that's a higher than most of the other months that we've seen. So great job for the volunteers and also yes. for the staff that coordinate with the volunteers. Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else for many of the trustees? And again, is there anyone from the public who wants to comment on this? We have no attendees present. Okay, thank you. Moving on to a pres special presentation. And uh, I'm turning the floor over to Trustee Petty at this point, uh, who is going to represent the board and make this special presentation. Bob, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. And, um, you know, this is one of the few times where I regret regret that we're not um, yeah. uh, meeting in person, but because uh, you've heard me say over and over again how much I like the Zoom technology and the hybrid uh, ability to meet in person or remotely. So uh, at any rate, <clears throat> um, this is actually bittersweet because I know we all uh, are happy for Inga and her retirement and all of the wonderful things that she's going to be able to do now that she's not going to be employed full time and um, fighting fires and raising goats and all the other things that take place up in Mariposa. But, um, you know, that's the sweet part. The bitter part, of course, is that we're losing her. And we, like with Mary Jane, we hope that. Uh, Nobody's a stranger and everybody stops by and keeps in touch. But as David did with Phoebe, um, I have a narrative that I would like to read and have <clears throat> entered into the minutes of today's meeting. Um, so let me just commence with that portion of my little shindig here on behalf of <laughs> all of the trustees on the board. <clears throat> in March of 2016, the Board of Library Trustees voted on a very important matter the selection of a new library director. As a result, on the 1st of April, 2016, Inga Waite began her tenure as our new director. But Inga's contributions to the success and growth of the Monterey Library have proved that it wasn't April Fool's Day for us, but the beginning of a noteworthy period in the library's history. 
After advancing from serving as interim library director, Inga not only continued the excellent activities that were in progress, but even more important, energized the outstanding innovative services that have prompted Monterey County residents to continue voting the Monterey Library as the number one library in Monterey County every single year. Of course, Inga has spent endless hours managing the budget and integrating our city resources with donations from contributors and our wonderful friends organization. She obtained grants from other sources and maintained our status in local and regional library organizations. Inga assembled a staff of highly competent individuals who have produced outstanding programs and services. Those administrative responsibilities really no, need no special mention other than to note the skill with which Inga performed. What is more interesting to me, based on the collaboration of the board with Inga, are the more one-of-a-kind achievements that have been realized during Inga's directorship. While many of these achievements have resulted from impressive efforts by other library staff as well, the buck stops at the top. And that means Inga deserves all the praise with which we'll look back and remember her contributions to Monterey Public Library. Maybe the most difficult challenge which Inga met with determination and perseverance was during the 2020-2021 period when the library went from fully open to fully closed to partially open to gradually reopening, which continues today as funding and staffing permit. To recount the events of the past six years and four months, I reviewed every agenda packet and report of minutes for every Board of Library Trustees meeting since April 1, 2016. And I have a list. Others may cite more or fewer or different items, but these are those that grabbed my attention. Here in just an approximate chronological order, because sometimes reports appeared after or before an achievement was completed, are some highlights. Starting in 2016, Inga's self-guiding maxim was, quote, visualizing the library of the future. Plans for the installation of needed signage that we had been talking about for a long time, including the front entrance in front and where Inga and I are standing right now, <laughs> was completed in December of 2016, California's first public library. That year, 1,400 children attended summer reading program. With the Friends of the Monterey Public Library, there was a little library ribbon cutting at Montecito Park, a very nice thing. We began the extremely successful financial literacy programs workshops in 2017. Library staff visited, quote, nearly every elementary school classroom in Monterey that year. Expanded bookmobile schedule to add Merrill Gardens Senior Living Community. The summer reading program attracted an increased number of children, plus 85 adults. We collected more food for fines donations than any other location in Monterey. In 2018, we introduced new library cards. We began lending telescopes. The new early learning programs included musical story time and baby rhyme time. We began staging the history slams for adults. Bilingual story times, story times were started at the bookmobile locations. We got a voting box for election ballots placed on Pacific Street in front of the library. With the Monterey Public Library Friends and Foundation, we had the most successful chocolate and wine event ever. A student success initiative led to the distribution of 1,783 library, new library cards to students. History Fest, including the archives crawl, attracted 3,828 participants. Then we had to start dealing with the citywide, quote, fiscal emergency that was declared in November of 2019. Despite the shutdown in 2020, we had 10 new video programs per week for children and adults. Sidewalk service for circulating materials. Radio frequency identification technology, RFID, was uh, installed. Despite reduced hours, in-person visitation increased 74% from October 2020 to October 2021. 
in 2022, it's only been a few months really, Monterey Library received a California State Library grant to fund a new bookmobile. Lots of different things got accomplished with her at the helm, you know? Looking to the future, a justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging plan was adopted, which is just going to have a whole lot. I could keep going on and on, but nobody here wants me to do that because these are just a lot of interesting things that are important and significant and ongoing achievements, consistent with, with what Inga said when she was hired, visualizing the library of the future. It's also important to take note of what our patrons think. You know, we talk about getting community input and everything. And I have a quote from one of our patrons that I'm going to conclude uh, my narrative with. I don't know exactly of whom or to whom this patron made this statement, but this is a quote. I'm not making this up. This is a quote, but it kind of sums it all up for me. This patron said, quote, I can see your smile through your mask. <laughs> and that just makes me feel really good. And, uh, and like we're really doing a good job. And in thanks for that and in appreciation, and I'll leave this hard copy for you to give to whoever puts it in the minutes. Um, in appreciation of everything that Inga has done and led others to do, because one important thing is collaborating and looking to each other for assistance and working together. Uh, the board wants to give you a going, sadly, a going away gift. And I won't tell you how I snuck this in, but I did. <laughs> but Inga didn't see it. There's a card there. You can open up the card later okay. if you want. But in here is something I want you to take and un undo. And it's a little heavy, so be careful. Wow. And there we go. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I told this tru trustees. This, this uh, item that you all have seen uh, is actually from Germany for whatever, however important that might be. Go ahead, pull the box. Okay. And what we, when we talked about what we wanted to leave you with here on our behalf and then thank you for everything. A lot of us said to each other that, well, you know, I get certificates and I get plaques and I get paperweights and get stuff like that. And the thought is very nice. It's always the thought that counts. But at the end of the day, those things are in the file cabinet or in the closet or uh, who knows where. So I wanted to make sure we got you something that you would actually use. And so, especially knowing how much you like to be creative in the kitchen wow. with, with cooking. We have this serving plate here, and you all have seen it. And I'll just read for the minutes and everything what it says, Inga Wait on the top and the library logo. Thank you for your years of outstanding service and leadership as director of the Monterey Public Library, Board of Library Trustees 2022. So we expect you not to put this on display and that's where it sits collecting dust. Although I do have a little display rack for you if you need to put it like this on a shelf. But notice the engraving and the etching is on the underneath side. So if you put a birthday cake and there's frosting all over or something where there's gravy and sauce, it's not gonna get into the little grooves and fill up the words, it'll be right here. So Kim is taking a picture here, so that's why I'm should we hold it down so that people can see the, uh, oh, yeah. the glass? And yeah. My, yeah. Each of camera. them have seen it in person. Let's yeah. See. There we go. You got a hold of it there? Yeah. So wow. thank well, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just stunned. Thank you so much. This is so wonderful and so practical. I can just see uh, rounds of goat cheese. <laughs> 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 goat cheese uh, on and my sourdough bread, you know, on this platter for uh, when you all come to visit us in Mariposa. So thank you so much. It's really been uh, an honor to uh, have this role. And uh, Bob, 
listed uh, so many great things and it's true, however, that there were other staff members or trustees <laughs> behind each one of those accomplishments. So it really does take all of us to make a successful library. And I was just uh, here at a lucky time where I got to be so closely involved. So thank you. And um, I will treasure this. Hold that up a second here. <laughs> Yeah, that makes it easier to see. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> there we go. That's great. And you can great. see. Yes. That gives it a better. Well, I think it's important that, um, you got it. wonderful that uh, I received this gift. I'm so delighted. And I think that, you know, we all really honor the written word. So I mm -hmm. wanted to show another gift that uh, I received um, from the city. And uh, Nat asked me to share that with you. So I'll share that right now, which is <laughs> I got a street sign. It says wait way. <laughs> and uh, then it has the you know the numbers up here, and those are the dates of when I worked for the city. So and then on the flip side, there's space for people to write little comments there's still a lot of space there so anyway um uh, we do like the written word so i'm very grateful for this as well i'll, I'll share with about the sign it's a time-honored tradition that uh, department heads and uh, leaders in the city who once they leave they, they get a sign with their name on it and we're very excited to present uh, that sign to inga and uh, and, and, sign, and sign it we won't we won't comment on what the the dates look like uh <laughs> when it's when it's listed on the sign but um I'll, i have some comments for but i know let, let, maybe i'll comment once each of the board of trustee members um but uh, have some kind words to talk to say about it yet before the meeting adjourns I'll, I'll wait though is there anyone else at the meeting who would like to speak before i open it up for trustees and then Nat? We have no public viewers. Yeah. Okay. Trustees, uh, how about we start with Marsha? Um, I'll be a lot briefer than Bob was, but, but that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> As a member of this board for the last five years, I have so appreciated your leadership <laughs> through the good times and the bad. Your enthusiasm, and your unfailing optimism, even at the depths of the pandemic, and your concern for others has served as a model for our library mm -hmm. um, and helped make it the welcoming place that it is today for everybody. You've been a great team player working with the board and you've helped us make the last few years both productive and fun. Yeah. So best wishes as you join the ranks of us retirees. I'm <laughs> sure Bob, the other Bob, We'll be delighted to have his partner back full time. And I bet you won't miss those nighttime and Sunday calls to reset the alarm or deal with the broken water pipes in the building. <laughs> so best of luck in your upcoming adventures. And thank you again for all that you have done for the library. Thank you. Jim? Well, Bob and Marcia have been so eloquent with their comments, it's hard to join uh, their ranks, but I'll give it a try. Um, I've uh, known Inga a little bit for 20 years, but I've worked closely with her, of course, the last four years. And I've always been impressed with her professionalism, her conscientiousness, and her just being a delight to work with. I've, uh, we've worked, as Marcia indicated, we've been through good times and bad, but she's always been just a delight to work with. I think she's um, helped the library through library and museums through mm -hmm. very, very difficult times when it yeah. would have been very easy to for everyone to get pretty negative. And I think she was just a role model to, to keep everything on a positive constructive manner as much as you possibly can even in the depths of very difficult times so i can't thank you enough and again on a personal note i've really enjoyed working with you so thank you very much harish yeah. i've known Inga the shortest i guess compared to the old timers only about six years i think but they've been great six years mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
I'm going to wish you all the best. And uh, likewise to Mary Jane, you're both uh, going to be missed. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Inga, I've known you the shortest amount of time because I'm the newest on the board, but thank you for the hand holding to get me through <laughs> as a baby board member <laughs> to help me through this. Um, I've, I've been so impressed during this time. I mean, I've worked in libraries my entire professional career and how I wish as a librarian, I would have had the opportunity to work for a librarian such as yourself. I've had good library directors. I've had interestingly challenging library directors, but I've never had a library director that was able with such grace and professionalism to deal with everything you have had thrown at you in the last few years. Um, as a board member, as a member of the Monterey community, I, I so appreciate everything you have done for us. And I am so going to miss you. Just to give you a heads up on this retirement thing, you will be amazed at how busy you are. You will never understand how you manage to get anything done and work a full-time job because it's like retirement is two full-time jobs, I sometimes <laughs> think. <laughs> But I really hope that you can pursue some of the things that bring joy to your life. And I hope you won't forget us all. I'm yeah. going to miss you. I'm um, going to miss you. I'll miss all of you. And, um, you know, it's been sort of a dream team board that I've been working with. You've all been so great. You've all had your strengths. And we've achieved so much these past several years. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, pat yourselves on the back too that um you've done so much and um you've really been great uh, mentors for me and uh you set a great example of how you can uh, make a big difference in your community as a retiree mm -hmm. and so now <laughs> now after i've slept for a year <laughs> yeah. i'll be ready <laughs> to, to try to give back to my community in some way mm -hmm. thank Nat? you yeah, so Inga, we're, we're going to miss you uh, greatly. I know all of you have had such positive experiences as trustees mm -hmm. working with Inga, but um, you don't have the privilege that, that I do to get to work with Inga in a different capacity as a peer on the executive team. You know, we meet every Tuesday morning as a, as a team, and then I have the pleasure of working with Inga and meeting with her every, every single week. And when I look at the calendar and see what's on the schedule, I, I can honestly say I, I do look forward to every interaction I have with Inga because she's she is so positive. And uh, we always have, I think the sums it up when it's there's always a smile behind the mask, no matter what's what's happening, the challenges that we face, uh, whether that's related to well, I, I won't I won't say what examples, but it, it's 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 always a, a positive attitude that Inga has. And I know I don't get a chance to work with Inga as closely as uh, as Kim and, and the other library staff. And I'm sure you know, Kim may have some words to say as well. No, no pressure. Um, but <laughs> but it's, it, it truly has been uh, a gift. And um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll miss working with you, Inga. It's all I, you know, the, the laughs, the, 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 the good times. Um, we had an executive team uh, luncheon farewell with Inga over at Lower Presidio Historic Park just yesterday, and that was a nice get together. We got uh, Ike's sandwiches, which was Inga's pick. Uh, the story behind that is when there was a, a bomb scare at the library, her and the team went over to Ike's and discovered how great their sandwiches were. So <laughs> we, we got, I think the 100 pence, I'm not sure which, which uh, sandwich you got but we're just friends we're just friends that's right we're just friends so I remember when, I, when i pulled the sandwich out i gave it to inga and said we're just friends and uh, it, it was it was great so we're, we're glad to have the uh, send a, a good farewell to inga but we we know that she'll have a great time with her husband up in mariposa enjoy birding and hiking mm -hmm. we got her a, a rei gift card and oh. uh, just wanted to, to wish her wish her the best so uh it's, it, I will miss seeing Inga on the calendar and uh, sending your invites and, of course, all those text messages that are part of the public <laughs> record now. <laughs> so, 
And I, I just have a, a quick uh, photo to share with all of you and just wanted to wish Inga a very happy <laughs> experiment. <laughs> and Inga, do you remember this photo? I don't know if you've seen it. I, I took the I, photo. I haven't seen it, but this is when um, Nat and I went to look at, and Kim too, at the bookmobile it's a it's a sprinter van bookmobile that they uh, received at the county library mm -hmm. and um yeah we were imagining what our sprinter van will look like so perfect <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes right along with uh i've done a few ride-alongs in the fourth of july parade mm -hmm. on our bookmobile and the last time i did that i was dressed up as uh, or I had a pigeon with me and there's a little kid's book that's called don't let the pigeon drive the bus and so everybody <laughs> would yell pigeon pigeon <laughs> when uh, we went by because I was dressed up as the, the pigeon that you shouldn't let drive <laughs> anyway, thank this, you. Was, this was fun a couple of months ago we, we went to visit and I'll, I'll tell you I've never seen anyone so excited to be in a bookmobile it, it was Inga was <laughs> like a kid in a candy shop <laughs> oh, what's this? Opening up all the the cards. So I know we're excited uh, to, to have this uh, bookmobile. But I I don't know. Inga, I don't recall. I think you had a chance to drive it too, right? Or were you just a passenger? Uh, I don't think I drove it. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I don't they think. should let me drive it. But yeah. I sat in the driver's seat. Yes. She did sit in the driver's seat and mm -hmm. went went for a spin. And uh, I, I grabbed this photo. And we're we wish you the best. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I'll miss working with you, Nat, and. Um, of course, I I feel that I played a role in in selecting that. I know I really didn't, but um, I was very <laughs> impressed during his uh, when I got to meet him as a candidate um, with his knowledge of. Um, You're too kind. This is about you, Inga. See, so this is this is Inga <laughs> in a nutshell. She'll deflect yeah. Yeah. and talk about anyone else but her. This is your time, Inga. I really appreciate all that you've oh, done. Thank for you. Well, anyway, he he had his library card already, so that's always a good sign. <laughs> Is there anyone else? All righty, then we will move on. Are there any additional trustee comments before we adjourn? Seeing none, good luck to you, Inga. I'll be thinking of you. I'm gonna miss you something fierce and I will go ahead and adjourn this meeting.